Hello everybody, welcome back to my shop. What I have here is the Antina Tina 2 Mini 3D Printer. This is a printer that's designed to be for beginners and it has a pretty interesting feature set. If you're interested in learning more about this printer, stick around. Stick around to the end of the video to see how you can win your own Antina Tina 2 3D printer. After unboxing the printer, I took inventory of everything that comes in the package. You get a user's guide with some spare build service tape, a small spool of filament, a USB cable, a small bag of tools and parts, and the power cord. Like I mentioned before, this printer is geared towards beginners, and it is designed to get the user up and running as easily as possible. To set up the printer, all you need to do is remove the protective cardboard from around the print head, insert the Bowden tube into the extruder assembly, flip down the spool holder arm, install the spool, and feed some filament into the extruder. Plug in the machine and power it on. On first boot, after making a language selection, the printer will walk you through the filament loading process. It will automatically preheat the hot end and begin pushing filament through once the hot end is up to temperature. Click the wheel to stop feeding filament. I inserted the included SD card and found some pre-sliced models. I picked a simple box and initiated the print. Some things to note. This printer does not use a heated build plate. This is my first printer without a heated bed. I thought this printer did a great job printing on an unheated bed. I believe one of the reasons it does such a good job on the unheated bed is because it also features an inductive automatic leveling system. This helps get a perfect first layer every time. Of course, this first sample is printing on a raft, but we will test the first layer adhesion soon enough. I also noticed the printer uses a removable flexible magnetic sheet on the print bed. This should make prints easier to remove without the need to use a scraper or other tools to pry the print off the surface. I hopped onto my computer and loaded the special version of Cura included on the SD card. This version has the Antina brand profiles on it, which is easier than making a custom profile on an existing installation of Cura. The version is 4.10, which has more than enough settings for this printer. I sliced a regular Benchy STL and brought the SD card back to the printer. The auto level sensor probes three locations on the build plate to verify correct distance to the nozzle, then I let the printer do its thing. As you can see, the Benchy printed out just fine without a raft, a skirt, or a brim. This particular model is the Tina 2 Wi-Fi, so I wanted to test out the machine's Wi-Fi capabilities. I had to refer to the manual for this part, but basically you set it up like any other IoT device, and once that is complete, you are invited to download the Polo Print Pro app to control the printer. You can move the axes and home the hot end. You can also view the files on the SD card and start printing models that are already on the card. At the moment, there is no way to send files to the printer or the SD card. This Wi-Fi feature has so much potential, but at the moment, until you are able to send files directly to the printer from your computer or your phone, I view it mostly as a novelty. It is useful, however, for remotely monitoring the progress of something being printed, and it can alert you when the print is complete. So there is some usefulness there.
What I like about the Antina Tina 2 Wi-Fi printer. Simple setup. You pretty much unbox, plug in, and get printing. No assembly required. This is a great feature for beginners or someone who is interested in 3D printing and not so much as interested in assembling a 3D printer. Great print quality. This printer does a great job. All the moving parts run on rods and linear bearings that have very tight tolerances, which translate to very smooth and accurate print quality. Portability. I may not need to move my printers around often, but the self-contained design of the Antina Tina 2 makes it easy to move from room to room if I'm so inclined. Everything is safely housed inside the printer enclosure, so I can move it without worrying about accidentally knocking something out of alignment. Auto leveling. The inductive auto leveling probe worked great and I feel like it is a must have for a young operator or someone just getting into 3D printing. Coupled with the provided software, this unit should be successfully printing straight out of the box for just about any skill level. Things I don't like about the printer. Power jack location. The location where you plug the power cord in is just awkward. I know it is just plugging directly into the main board of the printer, and since the main board is at the top, that is where the plug goes. My concern is that at this location, the power port or cable is more prone to get pinched and kinked or potentially damaged. I would prefer to have the cable connect to the bottom rear of the printer out of the way. Difficult to maintain. I like the self-contained design of this printer but that could also be a drawback if you need to deal with a clogged nozzle or some other issue with the hot end. Besides the enclosed nature of the unit, there is also a steel grill protecting small curious hands from getting burnt on the hot end. All of this would need to be disassembled in order to do some basic maintenance, like clearing a clog or changing a nozzle. Conclusion. Despite my minor gripes, I really do like this printer. It was clearly designed with the beginner in mind. That is evident by the number of informative stickers placed all over the outside of the unit. I really think this is a great printer for a beginner and experienced users alike. The build volume is small, but that shouldn't be a surprise if you know what you are buying. The Antina Tina 2 is easy to set up, easy to use, has some handy tech on board, produces clean prints, and has the added benefit of some Wi-Fi features. If you have a child that is showing interest in 3D printing, or you would like a little 3D printer to sit on your desk next to your computer, the Antina Tina 2 would be a good choice for you. The good folks over at Antina have offered to give away a free 3D printer to one lucky subscriber. All you have to do is visit their YouTube channel and subscribe to that channel. Once they reach 1,000 subscribers, they will select two of those subscribers Contact them, get their information, and send out a free printer to each one of them. So I'll provide a link up in the cards and down in the description below. Be sure to visit them and subscribe to their channel for your chance to win your very own Antina Tina 2 3D printer. So as you can tell from my short review that I'm actually pretty impressed with this little printer. It's a very capable machine. It prints really well. It's very easy to set up, and I really do think it was designed with the beginner in mind. If you're interested in learning more about the Antina Tina 2 3D printer or possibly buying one for yourself, I'll leave a link down in the description below. You can click on that link and it'll take you to the product page. I really hope you liked this review. I hope it was informative to you and it helped you make your decision. I'd like to thank the Antina team once again for sending this unit out for me to make this review. And I'd like to thank you for sticking around to watch this video. If you like this sort of content or also DIY and maker content, I post videos from time to time. So you might want to consider hitting the subscribe button to sign up for future updates. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.